Hey everyone, this is Sam from Wargamer Online, and we've been sent some awesome stuff from Osprey again, Osprey Game. So um, this is Frostgrave, as you can see in front of me. We've had some Frostgrave reviews or unboxings on the channel before. All three of these have been sent recently, and these are due to be released on the 28th of June this year. So it's pretty exciting if you're interested in Frostgrave anyway. So we're going to go through these in stages. We'll start off with... We'll start off with this Grimoire, which is a box. Now this is $14.99, recommended retail price. So it says the Grimoire is the ultimate resource for wizards. Let me try and get this off the shiny bit, there we go. For wizards, as they set out on an expedition into the frozen city in search of adventure, glory and power. This set of cards features all of the spells found in the Frostgrave rulebook, Thor of the Lich Lord, Into the Breeding Pits, Forgotten Packs, the Frostgrave Folio, and the Maze of Malkor, which is the book we're going to look at now, and provides players with a quick and easy reference guide to their wizard's abilities. So something I really like whenever it comes to playing games is having reference material or cards, something that makes the game a little bit easier to actually play. I've taken these out of the plastic wrapping, and especially with a game like Frostgrave where there is so much to choose from in terms of spells. It's nice to have all of these cards available. So it's perfect. I mean, for £15, you could get all of these, put them onto a document, print them out, and it wouldn't cost you much other than the paper, the printering, and the time. But these are good quality cards. They're gonna last a long bit of time. They look nice, and they're in a nice box as well. So for the sake of £15, I'd say it's well worth picking these up if you're gonna be playing the game in any way, shape, or form, to be honest with you. And that way, when you pick your spells, you can just go through this, pack all of these packs and you can put them all out next to your wizards and you can play so there's not much to say on those other than they're a really good addition to the stuff that you can buy so yeah tons of stuff we, we haven't actually even played a game i've got my frostgrave warband not played a game because rachel still needs to paint hers i know pink's done his and he's ready to get going with some games so i think we're going to have to bite the bullet and start doing some at some point in the near future We'll do the next one, because this will be a quick one as well. So, this is a novel, and I'm obviously reading some books uh, from the Age of Sigmar and other fantasy novels in between, and this is one that's based on the Frostgrave world. So it's called Oath Gold, A Tale of the Frozen City. This is out on the 28th of June as well, and written by Matthew Ward. We'll just read the back of this, to be honest with you. So Kazran is a pursuer, a member of an ancient bounty hunting order, wielding the magics of the mythical court of crows. He has lived a life dedicated to bringing justice to the wronged without fear or favour, but when circumstance forces him to accept a commission from a notorious crime lord, Kazran becomes entangled in a web of deception and betrayal. As he scours Frostgrave's ruins in search of a young woman and her stolen magical treasure, he finds more questions than answers. Who is she? What did she steal? And why did she run? And just where does Kazran's mysterious benefactor stand on the matter? In the end, the greatest question remains, does justice have any place in the frozen city? So, obviously I haven't read it. It's just turned up. <laughs> There's a... Uh, I'm not the fastest of reader readers. It takes me a while to get through things like this. I'm much better at audiobooks because I can put it on in the background, but I am definitely a fan of Frostgrave and the, the background that goes with it. I think it's really cool. So, cool, see what I did there? It's a frozen city, Jesus. Um, but I think that's gonna be worth reading if you're interested in the background. Next, we have uh, The Maze of Malkor. So, this is a new supplement, and I think this was based around a wing of uh, well it's basically like a museum let me just let me just read from the actual uh, description that it came in. So, a new supplement for Frostgrave containing new adventures, treasures and creatures as well as some optional rules of dated and mythical lost schools of magic. So, part magical university, part museum, part tourist attraction, the great Collegium of Artistry had flourished in Felstad's final days. Under the leadership of the seemingly immortal Malkor the Mad, the vast complex expanded with new wings being built wherever they would fit, including up and down the rock face and even buried within the mountain itself. Visitors called it one of the most architectural wonders of the world, and the students, who often got lost in its endless tunnels, simply called it the maze. With a titanic crash, an immense ice shelf tears free from the mountains that looms above Frostgrave, revealing the lost Collegium, and the race for its secrets begins. The maze is known to have contained many rare and unique treasures, and who knows what may have survived. So uh, it's basically a new supplement. It's giving you another area to go and fight or, you know, basically try and get all of these treasures and relics and artifacts that may have been frozen and lost for a long time obviously if it was 
a museum, there's going to be some really nice relics lost in here. So we'll take a look at what is inside the book. It's going to be rules updates. So I'm, I'm, because I haven't played the game, I can't really go in depth about what sort of stuff this changes. But for anybody who has played it and, and knows what these updates will do, it might be better putting that in the comments down below. So we've got updates to placing treasure tokens, securing treasure, stat rolls and things like that. The campaign as well, which is something that we definitely need to do with Frostgrave because you can build up your warband, you can recruit new people to your warband and your wizard gets better, your apprentice learns new skills and you get better equipment. So the campaign is a huge part of the Frostgrave gaming. So, and it looks like it's taken up a good portion of this book, you know, 15 to 46 pages there um, where it's actually been taken up. And then you've got the new schools of magic by the look of it. So the schools of the pentangle. So you've got astromancer, distortionist, fate caster, a sonancer and a spiritualist. And something that I really love, and I know Rachel was excited to, to do in Frostgrave, is all of the spells. Like wizards are really cool. And with Frostgrave, you've got so many different wizard schools to choose from. And the spells that go with it are very thematic and they fit the uh, the law, the, uh, not the law, the, uh, they fit the school of magic that you've chosen. You've got new treasures. And you've also got a new bestiary. So there's a ton of new enemies that you can actually fight inside here, like a phase cat or a shrieking wolf, which if it wasn't scary enough being a wolf, then you've now got a shrieking one. We've got an introduction. So this is a sixth expansion. And there's an ex and, uh, basically a whole load of information in there about why he's written that. Uh, rules updates. So we won't go through these. I'm just going to flick through this. If you can see anything that's interesting to you, obviously read it and put down below if there's any major changes because I haven't read it yet, I can't really tell you much about whether it's a big change or not. Uh, creating experienced wizards. So again, if you wanted to just play a one-off game, you could probably do an experienced wizard. You could probably just roll it and, and play a one-off game and, and be as powerful as you would be at the end of a campaign by doing that. But then you've got the, the campaign book, which I think is is huge. Oh, there's my that's my necromancer. Yeah, not my actual one. I didn't paint these. These are much better than mine, but I did a painting tutorial on him, maybe, I want to say, or him on the website, wargameronline.com. There is a tutorial for one of these that I painted for my warband. I know I definitely did one. So there's a load of scenarios in here, and you can follow all of these to play through the actual campaign and the, the story that goes alongside that. You've got another scenario there, another scenario, loads of scenarios. I love the artwork in these books as well. I'd love to get some full art versions of these and stick them up in frames. Anything fantasy and mystical is definitely a win from me. And there's Rachel's Elementalist, who I also did a tutorial on. I'm just remembering now, I actually did that one. So we've got a load, a load of scenarios. What's that, 12? I love this artwork as well. Really nice. All right, the schools of the Pentangle. So, astromancers draw their magical powers from the positions of the heavenly bodies and have learned how to use the various al alignments and conjunctions of planets and stars to affect reality. Uh, they combine the precise nature of sigilists with the raw power of elementalists. Astromancers tend to wear heavy robes adorned with astromantic symbols and typically spend so long gazing towards the stars that they forget about day-to-day -day life, letting their hair grow long, barely eating and washing infrequently. They will almost certainly be found carrying a telescope, a sextant and, a various, uh, and charts of various types. So they're also known as stargazers, they've got symbols, they've got an alignment. Oh, it's really cool. The alignment is uh, how well they cast spells. You've got distortionist, a fate caster. Okay, and then you've got what's this? Lost spells. The following list contains all of the spells from the pentangle ordered by school. These spells can never be learned, and a wizard will never find a grimoire containing them. However, they do exist on numerous scrolls scattered throughout the Collegium, giving wizards access to them on a temporary basis. That's cool. So uh, almost better than a relic or an artifact. You've got these scrolls where you can do really powerful spells as a one-off thing. So for example, you've got the Astromancer, uh, self only. Every time the caster of the spell successfully casts a spell, including this one, he regains one lost point of health. And when you really want to keep your wizard alive throughout these games, getting those that health returned is, is really uh, key. Meteor Strike, I know Rachel would kill for that. That looks like her type of spell. Pick a target within 20 inches and line of sight and place a market. At the start of the spellcaster's next activation, all figures within three inches and line of sight suffer a plus seven shooting attack. That's definitely something Rachel would pick. And so, along with Starfall as well. We've got Distortionist, Fatecaster, 
So there's a there's a bunch of extra stuff there for casting spells. I love that artwork as well. I don't know who the artist is that's done these, but they are very good, very talented. I want like a fantasy version of myself being created with like some salt bags down here and just like extra salt up here for all the games. Yeah, Sonancer, Spiritualist. Wow, another bit of cool artwork. She's, she's really nice. Love all the spirits coming off in the background. So playing wizards from the Pentangle, although they are not specifically designed for it, all of the if all players in the campaign or gaming group agree, then the schools of magic of the Pentangle can be used by players for their wizards. This should work well enough in the short term, but over a very long campaign, these wizards will be at a slight disadvantage due to having fewer spells in their school and fewer aligned schools of magic. So maybe if you're all taking stuff from the Pentangle, it won't make a difference because you'll be on the same power level, but if you're mixing it with the normal schools of magic then it will be more difficult so you've got new treasure scroll case you'd be a bit annoyed if you got that one we'd be really happy if you got a sky gondola <laughs> uh what else we got book of the pentangle or a bloodstone amulet and then we've got rules for all of these as well really nice eye of malcor this magic glass eye can only be used by a character that has suffered the lost eye permanent injury while equipped with the eye of malcor the figure suffers no effects from this permanent injury and gains plus one to all shoot rolls it does however begin the game with minus one health so what you would normally have with a disadvantage of only having one eye becomes a bonus because you've taken the eye of malcor instead very situational but also very lucky at the same time that's nice. Mind lock ring. This magic ring makes the wearer immune to mind control spells. It cannot be worn by undead or demons. I know pink is all about mind control and messing with people's wizards, so mind lock uh, ring will definitely need to be used against him. Scroll case. <laughs> Can hold two scrolls, so it's not completely useless. We've got a wand of casting. So there's loads of extra stuff there. We've got a new base resource. So gondo gondola, 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 whatever. Repair, repair, I can't even speak. Gondola repair shop. After any game, a wizard may repair up to five points of damage to any sky gondola he owns. And then, my favourite bit, the bestiary. And what an amazing bit of artwork to go with that as well. It's like a young Gandalf fighting a chocobo. Uh, oh, or an acris beard, acris beard. Six foot flightless bird resembles a mangy, mangy combination of an ostrich and a vulture. So that must be that thing. I think it looks kind of cool. Originally from the southern islands, in their natural habitat, these birds are generally peaceful and pass their days eating large bugs and small lizards. Unfortunately, they have survived the thousand year imprisonment in the Collegium, have had to find new feed food resources to survive and have, from generation to generation, become indiscriminate carnivores and brutal hunters. So they used to be really nice, now they eat people. We've got... what's this? Ooh, special character. Okay, so we've got some special characters there. And we've got all these, oh, these are all the people you can add into your warband. So you can have a Banshee, a Blood Wave, a Bogman, a Coalman, Collegian Porter, uh, a Wizard Shade, is that? What's that? Oh, a Glass Spider, that sounds cool. Okay, so you've got a bunch of extra stuff that you can actually put in. Phase cats, they look really cool. Limited teleportation, that's great for grabbing treasure and running away. And again, amazing artwork. Absolutely love that. That's awesome. Oh, who is that? I want a character, I want a model to paint that's like that, with that vibrant purple and the mask and the eyes and really like that. And all the ghostly spectres, Ghost Gate, if pink if he ever watches this. Reminds him of Ghost Gate. Reminds me of Ghost Gate. And then the Wraith of Malkor. Okay, by the Cataclysm, Malkor had served as headmaster of the Ecclesium for a record 137 years. He was incredibly old, even for a wizard, and most accounts also held that he was completely mad. Despite this, the Ecclesium somehow continued to function. It would likely never be known exactly when Malkor became a Wraith, but what is almost certain is that he is bound to the Collegium, and some part of him will probably haunt its halls even if his wraith form is destroyed. If another player is controlling the wraith of Malkor, he should roll for his initiative and activate in the wizard phase. He may also activate any of his advisory council within six inches at the same time. Malkor carries a collection of magic wands which he can use at any time. If Malkor is being used as an uncontrolled creature, use the following priority list to determine his actions. So you can fight against Malkor or you could control him as one of the people in the game. 
which is awesome. And then we've got the tale of, a fro of the frozen city, which is the novel, which I showed at the beginning, or at least I read the, the back of the book. And there's another one there, second chances. Okay, so nice, nice supplement, a nice expansion for the Frostgrave world. Recommended retail price at $14.99. So 15 quid for the Maze of Malcor. We've got the novel, which comes down at nine pounds, recommended retail price. And we've obviously got the cards, which were $14.99. So good bunch of releases. And uh, if anyone has benefited from at least looking through this video, then it was worth me spending the time to do it. Thank you very much to Osprey Games for sending this over as well. Thank you very much, Pete. It's uh, always a pleasure to receive these awesome goodies in the post and have a look through them. And one day we will definitely get around to doing a full campaign of Frostgrave using my wonderful Necromancer Warband that will win every single game and steal all the treasure. Uh, other than that, I hope you've enjoyed. Please like the video if it's helped you. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I'll see you in the next one.